Hello listeners, continuing with our unit 20 of Crafts and Folk Art, in this we are going to study about the languishing or the dying crafts, improvements and efforts made by the government for revival of these dying traditions. The tourism and craft production admittedly can be a turnaround for every nation that has cultural resources in its platter. However, tourism has to take into account the preservation rather than distorting or destroying them. The promising economic incentives which are offered to the communities drives them to transform and strikingly transfigure the very essence of the cultural representations like handicrafts under the pressure of so-called commodification. This process of commercialization in the long run may jeopardize the survival and identity of the community involved. This is an area that needs better focus and support. A genuine folk art and craft in the natural surroundings are not easily found by the tourists. The more untouched and rich the local culture, there is less likely that it is a tourist spot in the modern sense. A seventh of the world's population lives in the villages of India and it is mostly the tradition and customs of these people that constitute the rich cultural heritage of folk arts and crafts. The origin of these arts and crafts are seeped in folklore, history, myth, superstition, science, religion or pure and simple practically and utilitarian meaning. While these may appear strange to the foreign tourist eye, they are deeply entrenched facets of village life. The commercializing of them by making them objects to view as in a museum or as curiosities will be the first step towards destroying those very lifestyles. The most crucial question is to retain a balance so that visitors understand Indian culture, perceive its manifestation in diverse forms and respect its sanctity without imposing the distant and alien culture and invading the privacy of the other. The policy makers and the tourist guides must both reflect this approach and should frame special programs for the preservation and strengthening of the vanishing art forms. Now let us understand what are these languishing crafts. The onslaught of modern life with its mechanization and mass media culture has set into decline of arts and crafts which are today termed as languishing crafts. These includes those skills and art forms that are still known and are practiced but are fast losing their relevance and popularity amongst the public. These crafts are deeply embedded in the cultural fabric of different regions. For all these reasons, in recent years, it has become extremely important for countries to develop policies that promote handicraft production along with thirst on tourism development by clearly differentiating and analyzing the advantages and disadvantages of both. While some of these may be active and surviving, others are languishing or on the verge of extinction. The languishing crafts are those which may be practiced but are fading away into oblivion due to the onslaught of global forces. Now let's discuss what are the factors which are leading to these languishing art. As we discussed, the handicraft sector has been plagued with a lot of problems the first one being the competition from the foreign goods. Factors like competition from foreign countries in terms of designs, processing and finishing, technology as well as credit accessibility and delivery controls by the middlemen in marketing have served as an argument augment to this problem. As the global market has witnessed changes, tastes and preferences, the finishing and processing of these products is now done by machines. In fact, a movement towards better quality mass-produced goods has started. Very often, production work is outsourced to countries offering artisans with lower wages. India also faces stiff competition in the domestic market from the Chinese handicraft industry due to the lack of infrastructure and awareness of new technology. Number two, the entry of middlemen has also broken the link between the customer and the artisan. The middlemen or the intermediaries work as input in the supply chain between the customer and the artist. Hence, artisans are dependent on them for the sale of products. 
the traditional significance of certain crafts like patachatra a plique work like chandula of pipli in puri odisha madhubani paintings of bihar kalighat paintings of west bengal stone and wood carvings from karnataka are being affected the tamil nadu and rajasthan have found their way in international markets the link between the artisan and the consumer has been eroded by these merchants for example the exa- the popular example we can discuss here is the chamar weaving community of monpur in banaras do not deal with the final customers in fact the merchants or wholesalers play a pivotal role in bringing the sarees to the market thus benefiting the most through the transaction economically also the crafts are finishing because of the unorganized nature of work in handicraft business there is absence of formal training and organizations to represent the artisans interests thus the artisans may have little bargaining power also as most artisans belong to the economically weaker sections availability of credit poses a problem local traders or middlemen exploit them by providing them funds at high interest rates they also lack access to markets and financial organizations another point is the failure to adapt to new markets this is also a major contributing factor to the languishing status of the crafts the changing consumer tastes are reflected in preferences for chrome leather synthetic textiles and earthenware which have pushed out the vegetable tanned leather hand woven cloth fabrics out of demand the lack of knowledge about updated technology and other developments coupled with resistance on their part to now the failure to adapt to new markets is also a major contributing factor to the languishing status of the crafts the changing consumer tastes are reflected in preferences for chrome leather synthetic textiles and earthenware which has pushed out vegetable tanned leather hand woven cotton fabrics out of demand lack of knowledge about updated technology and other developments has coupled with resistance on their part to incorporate new changes has aggravated the issue further also lack of property rights is a fundamental issue in analyzing the languishing crafts and the attempts at survival can be addressed to lack of intellectual property rights the determination of the ownership of the designs of the handicraft can be a problem as the artisan is less equipped to protect the creative innovation which deprives the original producer of his or her share in rewards another factor responsible for dying craft is commodification the multinational corporations with their base in wealthy countries exploit the small scale industries where their work is outsourced the latter are exploited for cheap labor and raw materials for example countries like us and europe outsource production work to china and and countries like india in fact india has also emerged as an important destination for outsourcing despite the fact that handicrafts are produced in less developed countries there may be a demand for them in developed countries the availability of cheap manufactured goods has time and again destroyed and has wiped out the local handicrafts and traditional values are being eroded in order to survive craft struggle to adapt to western standards and hence become commodified for example the chandua makers of odisha have brought changes in the applique work to match the invasion from low cost products from the chinese companies the advanced technology has helped these foreign countries to replicate designs and hence manual designs have been overtaken by computerized ones further e promotions have facilitated the consumers globally to have access to regional products the multinationals have inundated the rural kerala markets with high tech marketing which has resulted in shift towards factory products another factor could be the languishing festivals and fairs a new style of tourism festival is emerging which is completely superimposed and alienates the local population the alienation can be in various ways for example they create a distance through use of alien languages by making local communities with their customs dress and crafts into exhibits or curiosities to be stared at or photographed 
by being patronizing own people in front of foreigners by imposing alien cultural values such as cabarets alcohol casinos etc by conveying that development of infrastructure for tourism has greater priority than the general needs of the local population now there are nine art forms which we'll discuss that could disappear forever if they are not saved india is the land of arts and crafts almost every region has its own traditional form of art that includes drawings paintings embroideries carving sarees and all more all the more we are really blessed to be born in a country with so much of diversity in this space sadly however some of these art forms are on the verge of extinction now let's take a look at these forms which need to be saved right away the first one being the manjusha paintings these paintings is believed to be the only art form in india that is displayed in series each representing a story within it this art form originated in bihar back then they made products only to be used in bishari festival a festival which was dedicated to the snake god that took place in the district of bhagalpur this art flourished heartily during the british rule in india however it started fading away in the middle of the 20th century fortunately the bihar government is making an effort to revive this craft and patent it as bhagalpur folk art the second one being the traditional art of puppetry now puppetry has existed in india for over 3000 years in many forms there's shadow puppetry from kerala katputli from rajasthan and kanderi from odisha there are various few artists left that there are very few artists which are left that know of this art some ngos have tried to be bring puppetry to the urban cities yet this art form is nearing its end the parsi embroidery has been a part of india's diverse textile heritage during the bronze age this art form took birth in iran and with time it drew influences from european chinese persian and indian culture the sarees that depict parsi embroidery are known as parsi ghara sarees and take about 9 months to complete but now it is declining among parsi community as mass production of clothes that are readily available in the market another craft is toda embroidery the toda tribe residences of the nilgiri hills do them the entire tribe consists of only 2000 people and they're struggling to protect their culture and craft the embroidery is basically done on cloth with square shaped deceptions that are one of a kind and the embroidery is done on everything from wallets to cell phone pouches to bed sheets to stoles etc each with its unique design the naga handicrafts is very popular of nagas for the deep rooted culture and it strongly comes out in the form of art and craft the tribe is famous for creating interesting handicraft items made from wood and cane like crafts like baskets bowls decors carved benches shawls scarves and bags fortunately the tribe still takes part in expos to promote its craft but still these products are on the verge of vanishing due to the lack of buyers the rogan painting is popular of the khatri family living in the kutch area of rajasthan have been the, they have been the practitioners of the art for seven generations but now is done only by six surviving people the future generation isn't patient or hard working enough to take it up this extraordinary form of art is executed on fabric with castor oil paints and a 6 inch thin metal rod the paintings are expensive and are generally purchased by the foreigners but now they are also on the verge of decline the dhokra handicrafts which are popular of the bastar region which is a district in chatisgarh is home to tribes who specialize in dhokra handicrafts its wax casting technique and has been in in india for more than 4000 years old One of the earliest known dhokra artifacts is the dancing girl of Mohenjo-daro which is in display in the National Museum Delhi. These products are in great demand in domestic and foreign markets but very few tribes are practicing the art and it is getting difficult to save it. Also 
among the dyeing crafts we have patola sarees that involve partly ikat work and are most expensive sarees in the world each classic patola saree can survive for about 300 years and retains the color the sarees take 4 to 6 months to make with more than 70 days for the coloring of the silk thread and about 25 days for the weaving this is an extremely complex and time consuming dyeing art and is currently pushed by only four families in gujarat some of the families are trying to keep the tradition alive but the eventual fate of the art is unsure the mithila paintings is one of the living creative activities of the women of bihar it is a form of folk painting on paper cloth ready made garments movable objects that is mainly from done on the village done by the village women of mithila originally it was a folk art practiced by women of all castes and communities using natural and vegetable colors since it's practiced in only one village and very few women make these paintings we know that it's one of the dying traditions of india the craft and folk art has to be propagated and preserved today the area of folk and craft emerging out of the social system of communities is caught between the need to be preserved for tourism development and yet is in the process of getting efficaced as a result of other forms of developing development taken over how much is preserved salvaged revived or protected or nurtured is a matter for analysis for those concerned with both tourism and the preservation of the culture a market based approach can serve to mitigate the problems and improve the situational context in which the artisans are embedded we can revive by various moves or the policies the first one being the revival or regenerative requires a special design a technique or marketing inputs which is happening in some cases for example such objects are to be found in our national museum at delhi and in the state museums private museums and specialized craft museums in different parts of the country many objects however have gone out of the use as this traditional knowledge is often passed orally and many skills are set aside because of the high level of effort or cost involved in making them for example the traditional handicraft industry is facing a tough competition from these goods produced in bulk they compel the indian craftsmen to sell their goods below market price and they hire their services at below the prevailing wages this forces a craftsman to abandon the ancestral trade now there are other various measures which can be taken up by the government and the stakeholders they can also start giving up the grants the basic requirement is to strengthen this sector as an economically viable network of craft industries would be to provide startup grants which are geared towards setting up the craftsman workplace and to rule out their dependency on the middlemen also efforts like infusing existing skills with the new designs can ensure the quality products strategies can be made to seek to provide latest technologies to this sector and a proper need assessment establishment of centers institutes and clinics training and development programs and centers can be undertaken to revive these crafts also setting up of public and private institutions can be a major factor in promoting these crafts in fact in the last quarter of the 20th century many private and public institutions have been set up to collect nurture and display artifacts from different sections of our living cultures there are museums that also have live displays and demonstrations of folk skills and cultural centers that house museum like displays among programs for theater arts workshops study centers and musical performances they also serve the purpose of organizing temporary festivals and fairs in order to bring together various cross cultural elements in a presentation of unity and diversity the essence of india's cultural image to protect preserve and promote various forms of art and culture throughout the country the government of india has set up seven zonal zonal cultural centers with headquarters at patiala nagpur udaipur allahabad kolkata dimapur and tanjavur out of a number of schemes being implemented by these zonal centers the research and documentation scheme is to preserve promote and propagate vanishing visual and performing art forms including folk tribal and classical in the field of music dance theater literature fine arts etc 
the shilp gram scheme is there for the promotion of folk and tribal arts and crafts of the zone by organizing seminars workshops exhibitions and craft fairs the ministry of culture releases annual grant in aid to the seven zonal centers for organizing various cultural activities and programs throughout the country the government of india has established these seven cultural centers functioning as an autonomous body under ministry of culture with the prime objective of preserving and propagating indian cultural values and to establish cultural and national integration among the states and union territories special efforts are made to encourage folk and tribal arts to preserve and strengthen the vanishing art forms all regions have their own artistic creations folk and classical art and crafts sculptures paintings and textiles they also have historic temples mosques churches palaces and pilgrim spots apart from craft and folk art there are also efforts made by the private companies the most popular being the efforts made by the tata steel the tata steel which is in jharkhand and odisha has set up a tribal culture society in 1993 which has been working to revive and preserve the tradition and ethos of the many tribal communities who are living near and about its facilities in jharkhand and odisha which is in eastern india the society's efforts take in the conservation of tribal cultural traditions in language music and sport as also generating livelihood opportunities for tribal people the company supports a tribal cultural center that promotes tribal handicrafts and lifestyle tools and it hosts samavad and annual gathering of tribal communities from across india in conservation it has been providing support in reviving the traditional craft of hand embroidery as practiced in the dharmapuri district of tamil nadu and promoting theater as an art form in a program spread across karnataka the tata trust across india they have been doing lot of efforts for example in the craft sector the largest source of employment in india after agriculture has been providing jobs to more than 7 million families the future is bleak for these families who grappling as they are with the problems of access to customers and a limited ability to make high quality market driven artifacts and sundry products these trusts they help in the livelihood programs of the tribals and are geared to tackle such issues by reviving languishing crafts and through pilot design projects called do quality controls use of technology and the linking of artisans with domestic and export markets the backing is extended by tata trust to tribal communities in the dhokra clusters of south odisha exemplifies the approach to reviving the tradition of craft while linking these to income generation the dhokra artisans live in remote areas the distance from the market makes them highly dependent on traders dims their negotiation power and consequently drives them away from a skill handed down through the generations the tata trust is looking to change the situation by equipping artisans with comprehensive marketing linkages design capabilities training and technology support and ultimately towards self sustaining in the longer run the tata trusts have also supported handloom school in maheshwar in the khargum district of madhya pradesh which is an entrepreneur incubator for young weavers the first of its kind in india it is focused on equipping young weavers with skills and experiences in design in marketing and finance and in weaving that can make them successful entrepreneurs the art and culture of a nation are a vast consortium evolving incessantly since times immemorial naturally preservation conservation of india's rich cultural heritage and promotion of all forms of art and culture both tangible and intangible including monuments and archaeological sites anthropology folk and tribal arts literature and handicrafts all are important a art of music dance drama and visual arts of painting sculpture graphics is essential and assumes a lot of importance now we conclude this unit as we have discussed the issues which are related to the languishing crafts and which needs to be analyzed by the stakeholders the reasons behind the simple elegance of articles which is to be found in the traditional indian homes has been inundated with mass production of industrial goods and it has to be examined this facilitates an understanding of the status of these crafts and proper socio economic analysis of crafts in their respective contents 
so as to adopt strategies in order to preserve them. The purpose of the intervention needs to be outlined, whether in terms of the preservation of the cultural, symbolic values of the crafts, whether for documentation and for what purpose and of whether to create sustainable livelihoods. It is important to understand the cultural or ritualistic significance to protect, preserve and transmit the traditions. In other words, a holistic approach which looks at the existing socio-cultural organization of the craft and preservation of the artisan skills is imperative to their survival, identity and continuity of the cultural heritage. Now, summing up this unit, we have discussed the issues which are related to the languishing crafts which need to be analysed by the stakeholders. The reasons behind the simple elegance of articles which is to be found in the traditional Indian homes has been inundated with mass production of industrial goods and it has to be examined closely. This facilitates an understanding of the status of these crafts and proper socio-economic analysis of these crafts in their respective contexts so as to adopt strategies in order to preserve them. The purpose of the intervention needs to be outlined whether in terms of the preservation of the cultural symbolic value of the crafts, whether for documentation and for what purpose and or whether to create sustainable livelihoods. It is important to understand the cultural or ritualistic significance to protect, preserve and transmit the traditions. In other words, a holistic approach which looks at the existing socio-cultural organization of the craft and preservation of the artisanal skills is imperative to their survival, identity and continuity of the cultural heritage. Thank you.